I remember when they told me that I was pre-diabetic. I remember exactly where I was and I remember how I felt. And the thing was, it was still a shock to me even though I knew I was overweight and I knew I was unhealthy. And the thing is, is like now we've got so much more at our fingertips in terms of understanding what's going on. And when you look at pre-diabetes, there's a lot of things that you can do to start getting a little bit more control. Okay, it's called pre-diabetes for a reason. So you pay attention to markers of glucose, you pay attention to HOMA IR, you pay attention to your insulin resistance, your insulin sensitivity. But it turns out that there's specific kind of fasting that really seems to potentially be beneficial for pre-diabetes. Now, I don't wanna necessarily say it's the fix all, it's gonna do everything. I'm not a doctor, I'm some guy on the internet. I just have been in your shoes and I've been in that situation. I've been overweight before. So this study is interesting. It was published in the journal Cell Metabolism in 2018. So I'll break it down in its entirety. Today's video is brought to you by Thrive Market. So if you wanna check them out, you can save 25% off your entire grocery order. So it's an online grocery store, but it's not like a typical grocery store. You go online and you can sort by diet type, you can do all kinds of things. So if you're eating more low carb, you can sort by low carb. If you're doing paleo, you can sort by paleo. I think the big reason that I like Thrive Market is even though I look like I like being in front of people, I don't. I don't like going to the grocery store that much. I don't like big crowds. It's just not me. And I don't really like running into my neighbor at the grocery store all the time. I just want to get my groceries and get out. Thrive Market makes it so everything gets delivered to your doorstep. So that way you can be at your house when you're not hungry and not making bad decisions and make smart decisions and get everything delivered to your doorstep. So that link down below will save you 25% plus you get a free gift and all gets delivered to your doorstep. So check out Thrive Market down below. So this particular study that I found very interesting was one of the most rigorous fasting studies that has been conducted in humans. Now there wasn't a lot of data. They only did it with eight people, but that's what happens when you have like really rigorous study design. The meals were entirely controlled. So what they fed people was exactly what they packaged up for them. None of this, hey, go write down what you eat kind of nonsense that could be fudged or not right, right? So this study was designed to take a look at early time-restricted feeding compared to a control, which was more of like a 12-hour block. Okay, very interesting because early time-restricted feeding is all about consolidating your calories earlier in the day. Now, the reason that that's potentially beneficial when we look at this mounting evidence that we have in other studies is because we are more responsive to insulin, we are more responsive to fat metabolism, we are more responsive to glucose oxidation, fatty acid oxidation in the morning. It's just the way things work, probably because of circadian cues, right? It's morning, our signals are saying, go burn, be awake, burn fuel. So it makes sense to be eating then compared to stacking calories in the afternoon. So these diets were matched for calories. The only difference was the group that was doing early time restricted feeding had to have their last meal no later than 3 p.m. Okay, so they couldn't be eating late into the evening time. They did this for five weeks. What they found is nothing short of just mind blowing. So what we do know is that insulin sensitivity is higher in the morning, beta cell function is higher in the morning, and the thermic effect of food is higher in the morning. What that means is that when you consume food, you're gonna get a higher caloric burn, higher body temperature, thermogenic effect in the morning. So we know these things, but what we found with this study was that early time-restricted feeding improved fasting insulin levels quite significantly. Okay, so they improved them by 3.4 milliunits per liter in a fasted state. And then there were significant improvements at 60 and 90 minutes postprandial as well. And what this is indicating is that insulin levels were able to come up and then come down pretty quick. They were able to come out and do their job, put the glucose away into the cell, and then go ahead and go along their merry way. Well, they also found that early time restricted feeding improved what is called beta cell responsiveness. Okay, the beta cell is the cell within the pancreas that produces insulin. So if the beta cell is more responsive, that means that it's reacting quicker when it sees glucose. Why is this potentially good for a pre-diabetic? Well, because the last thing you wanna have is glucose levels staying elevated. And in a pre-diabetic state, you're still producing insulin, things are still working. They're just maybe delayed or a little bit dysfunctional. So you might have some cake and maybe 20 minutes later, it's purely hypothetical, you know, your, your insulin levels go up and kind of deal with the problem, kind of don't. But in this particular case, we're saying, wow, okay, beta cell responsiveness improved in the early time restricted feeding group, showing that when they consumed food, insulin levels 
went up quicker and dealt with the issue, which is the glucose, and then went back to baseline. So they also found that insulin resistance had decreased by looking at what is called the area under the curve for a three hour period. So area under the curve ratio, and it decreased 36 milliunits per liter. And in human terms, what that means is that how long glucose was essentially elevated and these like surges, rises and falls in glucose, how long it was under the curve, meaning how long before it was spiking and things like that, it had all improved. So There's pretty big, 36 milliunits per liter is a pretty big improvement in that. So again, that's something as a potential pre-diabetic that you may wanna look at. What's cool is that out of all the people that were doing this study, there were eight people, whenever they entered that crossover, meaning they were doing the early time restricted feeding group, then they had a washout period and they entered the other group. During that crossover period, only one person did not have insulin levels improved by 25% or more. So almost everyone had a 25% or more improvement of their insulin levels. Okay, now that's the kind of thing, again, we look at, right? That's indicating that potentially the beta cells were functioning a little bit better and able to do their job better. But then there was a study that was published in Nature, Journal Nature, in 2022. And this was looking at very, very similar things. This one was looking at early time-restricted feeding compared to midday time-restricted feeding. So very similar, except that one was consolidating their calories much earlier in the day, whereas one was eating a little bit more into the late afternoon, evening. Okay, cutting right to the chase here, the results for this study were very, very similar. They found HOMA IR improved, so levels of insulin resistance had improved, glucose had improved, level of adipose tissue had improved, insulin sensitivity had improved. So they're seeing markers across the board, and that's a relatively new 2022 study that really backs up a lot of the data that we've seen in that cell metabolism 2018 study. There's also a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that confirmed a lot of the same things, improvements in fasting insulin, as well as 24-hour glucose levels, which is something we really should look at, not just fasting. We wanna look at overall 24-hour glucose levels, how they are responding with food and things like that, in terms of like, is insulin actually doing its job? is glucose staying stable. And then there was also a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that was published in 2020. Same thing with early time restricted feeding that indicated it improved all these markers that are really the metabolic markers we should be looking at if we're potentially diabetic or pre-diabetic. Now again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not suggesting everyone goes out and magically does this, but even if you do not fast, the data is so mounting, it is so piling up in terms of eating earlier in the day. So even if you don't fast, maybe you try intermittent fasting with an early time restricted feeding strategy like one day a week or two days a week, but still make a concerted effort to stack most of your calories towards the morning and wean off as the day goes on. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.